DxO have just released their new Pure Raw version 3, which is a noise removal software specifically for raw files. So let's take a look and see what this new version can do for you. So now once we've launched the DxO Pure Raw 3, we have the option to add raw files to process, or we can drag and drop raw files directly from your image browser or your um, file, file explorer, or we can download some sample images. For this demonstration, I'm going to add our own raw file. So we click on this, and then we navigate to a folder where we've got our files stored. And I've got a selection of raw files here. We can either select individually, or we can multiple select. Select them all, and we'll click Add Photos. Each of these photographs now is ready for processing, so we can batch process the whole lot in one go, or we can just select um, single images only. So if we click on the Unselect All, and we can just select one image to be processed. So let's process this one here now and see what happens. We click on the Process Now button, and the new panel appears. Now, the raw processing and denoising technologies has four different options. We've got high quality, we've got prime, um, and we've got deep prime, and then we've got Deep Prime XD. Now this is the version you want to use, the Deep Prime XD. This offers the, the, the best quality noise reduction and image quality possible. Going on to the optical corrections, we've got lens softness. This is a form of lens sharpening actually, so we can either have soft, standard, strong, or hard. So this, as I say, this is just a form of lens sharpening. So I'm gonna go for a uh, strong one on this. And we can have a vignetting um, that can add either darkness, a little bit of darkening to the corners or lightening to the corners, depending on how the image is processed. And chromatic aberrations will also cure any sort of color fringing at the sides of images, and lens distortions will correct those as well. Now, the, um, DxO has a very large database of camera lens combinations. In fact, there's over 77,000 lens. Uh, camera and lens combinations and your lens and camera should be included in that list. Now if you click on a file that hasn't had one of these profiles um, installed, DxO will automatically install it for you and so you can just carry on working seamlessly and DxO will actually put the correct profile for, you, for your camera and lens combination. Moving on to the next section here, we've got output formats. We've got DNG, um, digital negative. Unfortunately, um, DxO will not allow you to save back in the raw file format. Now, like on this Panasonic here, we are W2 on Nikon's and NEF files. Um, these are proprietary file formats for the different camera manufacturers, and uh, I believe there's something to do with the copyright. So the DNG is an open source. Um, so we can actually use DNG and it has all the same characteristics, all the same qualities as the raw file. So DNG is one option that you can choose and that will allow you to fully manipulate the colors and everything else later on in your image application. JPEG, well JPEG, it actually does produce extremely good JPEGs and we've got a slide here where we can go up to 100%. Now I don't see the point of actually going to anything less than 100% if you're wanting to get the best optimum quality from your file. So really stay maybe at 100% here. It also tells you underneath here that the storage requirement for this particular file is going to be somewhere between um, 3 and 15 megabytes. Uh, for the DNG file, uh, looking at that one, that's going to be something between 56 and 90, 92 uh, megabytes. So it's quite a big file. Um, we can also option have a TIFF file. Uh, TIFFs can be 16-bit, which is quite a large file, 109 megabytes, 121 megabytes. Or we can have 8-bit compressed. Um, that's going to be 13 to 32 megabytes or we can have just a straightforward 8-bit which is going to be 54 to 60 megabytes so uh, for this one i'm just going to put it into a let, let's put it into a jpeg and see what happens we can actually have it output to all three formats if we wanted to 
um, and it will just create three different files with each one of them having their um, extension on there. So we'll deselect the TIFF and the DNG. DXO will now create a separate folder in the directory where you've actually um, bought the raw files from. So it will actually create a new file, leaving your original file totally intact, but it will create a new file for you. And that will put it in, in, create a new folder in the original images folder, or you can actually choose it, have it in a custom folder. You can rename the files as well afterwards. You can put whatever custom text you want on at the end of it. At the end of it, you can also export your file to an, uh, another application. So if you're using this as a standalone application, you can save it to Adobe Photoshop or Lightroom or choose another, another image editing application or like DxO, Photolab 6 or maybe Affinity or Capture One, whatever. Um, application you have on your system. I should also point out that you can actually um, access this software directly from within Lightroom. So now let's start processing this file. So we click on process and we're just going to process the one image only. Start processing and we'll and we can see this is all being in real time. The the bottom line is indicating now the progress of this particular file. We can also see on the on the actual image itself there's a, a progress bar going on there. So that's it'll take roughly about uh, 20, 25 seconds. So if you have a large collection of raw files, um, it may take some time to actually process all of them in one go, but the quality will be um, well worth looking at afterwards. So now we can view the results and it's showing us here now. I believe we can go to one to one on there. And on the left hand side here, we can see the unprocessed file and that's how it's processed the file. Uh, bear in mind, this is now a JPEG we're looking at here. Um, the DN In fact, the JPEGs do produce excellent um, quality from, from your raw file. So and we can see also the detail in these little um, piece, uh, in these little architecture details here, how we've fuzzed it up on the left-hand side, and once we bring in the correction, the noise reduction on there. Now, bear in mind, this has also got the color noise on there as well. So you may not, with most image editing applications or raw file processing, they will take out the color. But this is the pure raw file. There's nothing um, been added or taken away from it. Um, it's just the pure data, and this is how it will appear um, before any corrections. So it's very impressive. So now we can close this window, click OK. So once we close the file, it automatically opens up in Photoshop, and here we have the, the file ready to go. And as I say, this is just a, um, a JPEG version of it. If it was the DNG, then we'd have the Photoshop raw processing ability on there. Now here's an example of the optical corrections that DxO Pure Raw 3 can do. First we have the original image here. If we now magnify the desk to 200% and we can see the differences between the various settings soft, standard, strong and hard. So here we are looking at the soft version of it. If we click on the standard version we see it just a little bit more detail comes into it. And this is like an unsharp mask being applied to it. The strong, even more detail, and the hard, maybe a lot more detail. And we switch over to the soft and you can see the immediate comparisons there. In all um, reality, this is possibly best left to your image editing application where you can actually have full control of the unsharp mask and sharpening whatever you want, however you decide to sharpen your images. Um, but it's a nice feature all the same. And for those who want a quick JPEG that doesn't need too much fuss afterwards, then po possibly this is a good solution. So now let's pop back into DxO Pure Raw 3 and we're going to process another image. Um, we can see now that the images that have been processed will have a little tick by them. And this indicates to me now that image has been processed. So now I'm going to go for another image and we're going to go for this floral display. And we'll unselect that one. 
Uh, this one is actually been shot on a Micro Four Thirds camera, and it's been shot at an ISO of 25,600 ISO. Now, that's a very high ISO for any camera, let alone a Micro Four Thirds camera. And those of you who say that full frame will give you the best quality, well, Micro Four Thirds does have a lot up its sleeve as well. And with the help of software like this DxO Pure Raw 3, we can actually gain the maximum amount of quality out of it. So I'm going to process this one as a DNG file. So let's click on the Process Now button. And we'll select again Deep Prime XD. Um, high quality and the other settings, they will produce good results. But the best results will be the D Prime XD. And the XD stands for Extra Detail. Um, lens softness, well, I'm going to keep it on. Let's put it on standard there. And we'll choose the DNG file and we'll let the file go into a special folder um, which is located within the original image folder. And I'm not going to export it this time. So don't export after processing. As I say, we can actually export it to any image editing application that you want but we won't export it this time. So now we'll start processing this. Um, before I do that, I'd point out that the original RAW file, which is the Panasonic RAW file, um, occupied 23 megabytes. Um, this DNG file now is going to occupy between 56 and 92 megabytes. So it's a very large file, and I'm not quite sure why they need to be so large, but this is one of the possibly quirks that I've found with this software. So let's start processing it now. This approximately took about 35 seconds to process. So now let's view the results here. And again, I'll go to one to one and let's have a look. And as on the left hand side there, we can see the amount of noise that's been created and the cleaning up process that's gone on. It's produced extremely good results on this. So I'm very happy with that. And this is the DNG file. So close that and we click OK and our file has been stored. So now let's open that file in Photoshop now. So we go to File, Open. Let's go on to the RAW and DxO there and there we are. That's the D-Prime. They see the extension it's put on there. It's a DxO D-Prime XD so it's informing me that this file has been processed. If I hover over it, it's a DNG file and the size now is 74.1 megabytes. So now when it opens up in Photoshop, we have the original um, DNG file, which is actually a raw file. So we have all the functions that are associated with any raw file still available. This is opened up in Camera Raw 15.2, which is, which is part of Photoshop. So now we can look at this and we can alter whatever we want to do. We can open our shadows, we can close them up, highlights, just take the highlights down a fraction. And once we've done there, we can open up the image, we double click magnify and there we can see an absolute clean result of that image here. Now Pure Raw 3 is a major upgrade to the previous version, Pure Raw 2. There are plenty of features incorporated into this that are not actually in the version 2, mainly the optical corrections where we've got the um, soft, standard, strong and hard versions of your file, the ability to both export DNG, JPEG and TIFF files, TIFF compressed or TIFF 16-bit, TIFF 8-bit, the way we can actually decide on the quality of the JPEGs that we want to output, etc. There's lots of very good features within this Pure Raw. It's a worthy upgrade. Pricing wise, Pure Raw 3 as a standalone package is 129 euros or 115 pounds. One euro equals a dollar. So for, for euro prices, also read that as dollar prices. Pure Raw 3 upgrade is 79 euros. I haven't got a sterling or pound price for that. Photolab 6, now that's an interesting application because this does include the Deep Prime XD on there. So 
but you know and also the um, full ability for image editing as well um, for new users that's 219 euros or 199 pounds um, a very very good application and that has a lot of features in there or if you want to upgrade from a previous version of Photolab um, the upgrade price is 99 euros or 89 pounds DXO also offers three other applications, um, the Film Pack 6, which simulates various film types of um, traditional film. That is €139 Euros or £129, excellent application. DXO Viewpoint 4, this allows you to do perspective corrections, um, distortions, etc. It's excellent. I've used this one from version 2 upwards. This is also part of the Photolab um, 6 package as well. So if you have the Photolab 6 um, Elite version, that is, you will have Viewpoint in there as well, and that's €99 Euros or £89. Pounds. Nick Collection, well, that's a well-established um, set of filters, including Silver FX Pro, which is the black-and-white conversion program, and that Nick Collection is €149 Euros or £135. Pounds. All in all, DxO put on an excellent display of software and as far as DxO Pure Raw 3, I can highly recommend this. It's actually saved a lot of my files. I can shoot at high IS over my Micro Four Third camera or even my full frame camera and get absolutely clean photographs. For those who may be questioning these rose pictures, these are actually paper roses. So if they look in slightly artificial, it's because they are artificial flowers. All the other photographs contained in this review are not artificial.